Hi, my name is Asaid. I'm a math student at Cambridge University and you're watching Getting Personal with Team Upside. Question number one, Asaid. What was the most difficult part of the process when writing your personal statement? So I, I think it was sort of the, getting the voice right. Mm. So, I, yeah, so my t um, it just felt weird sort of writing, like explaining all my like perks and all the great things I've done sort of thing and just listing that down in a way that didn't feel like, yeah, that I was just writing down a list of my achievements and just bragging kind of yeah. thing. And it was so, yeah, I found that on the whole was the most difficult. And then I was stuck a lot on um, my opening state, opening sentence and my closing sentence. And they were the two like I spent the most time on being like wondering about, thinking about and doing different drafts of basically. Because... Oh, 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 go on, sorry. Yeah, no, as in just because, um, because I was basically told that those were the most important things to like um, get right and yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, 100%. All right, great. So second question, who was the biggest source of help for you when you were writing your personal statement? So I had, um, my school was lucky enough to have a sort of personal, or they had a, like a class or a, um, a group of teachers that you could go to to speak to about with anything to do with um, uni's personal statements and even Oxbridge, like an Oxbridge section as well. So I had my two teachers, um, one and my, um, yeah, so I had two teachers there was the head of sixth form actually and she would go over so she gave a few like after school classes about personal statements and also um she would go over like we would send her all our drafts and she would go over them and give feedback and things so that was really useful wow. and then the other thing was just online i'd search up personal statements online kind of thing and yeah. and yeah and have a look at maths ones and that sort of helped for sort of examples of the type of maths i wanted to put in yeah did you run did you run them by your maths teachers yeah i did although my maths teacher was very like he loved maths and didn't care about anything else so he, he kind of like he wasn't a massive help but um but yeah i ran it by him and like checked the maths was right i guess so yeah um so linked to that question um i'll, yeah. I'll just ask question nine now how many drafts did you end up writing for your personal statement so i had i'd say i had three separate drafts like like fully separate drafts where the first one I completely scrapped and the second one I completely scrapped and started over. Yeah. And then my last draft kind of thing, that was where I'd had, I was happy with my outline, but I spent like, I probably tweaked things, you know, like 10 or 20 times I was going back over it and like tweaking certain s sentences and yeah, yeah. Changing things for a while. So I'd say that's how, yeah, that's how my progress went. All right, cool. Um, when did you start writing your personal statement uh, and then yeah when did you end up finishing yeah so I started I basically had my first draft like in my head I was like oh I'm gonna start in uh what was it yeah summer holidays going into year 13 so I wrote my first draft in the summer holidays sort of by myself and then I got to school and when I came back to school um like literally within the first two or three weeks back at school I'd like scrapped it done a second draft Mm -hmm. and scrapped it again and then my final personal statement i probably had it like the rough outline middle of september and i was tweaking it literally right up until the uh Oxford deadline okay which was one middle of october so, yeah. yeah all right great um so question number three um how did you end up structuring your personal statement yeah so the way i had it was i basically had my opening um sentence which was like to you know draw people in and my closing sentence was sort of two separate things mm -hmm. and then in between my idea was i wanted probably like three quarters of it maybe two thirds of it was just talking about maths okay. and that was in my head that was i'm talking about maths and my main key point was i'm going to be talking about the, the maths is the most important thing i want to talk about and then in that i'm just going to embed as well as i can all the sort of stuff i've done around that or the stuff about me that applies to it like that makes me stand out basically mm -hmm. and then the last um quarter third sort of was just the uh was just my extracurricular activities okay stuff about me as a person all right all right great so when it come to when it when, when it came to you basically trying to kind of make your personal statement stand out how, how yeah. did you try to achieve that so I basically, I, I'd done a lot of like over that summer. So I read a few books and the last year I'd gone to um, sort of a maths 
course type, like for prospective students, a lecture course at Greenwich University. Mm -hmm. So I've gone to that, and those are my two main things that like I felt um, make me stand out. Yeah. And and then so I basically wanted to just talk about the stuff I learned at them. Yeah. And that was the key thing. And because the topics I was learning about there, I felt like they were quite relevant to uni maths rather than A level. Yeah. So I was, um, so my aim was basically, I was talking about certain proofs and certain results and certain like things I've discovered or things that I found cool that like, it was obvious that I would have had to have done research to be able to know about those. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and that was kind of my aim. All right. Great. So what were the, what were those books? Do you remember? Yeah. So I only wrote, I, I wrote, I read two. I remember that. And I only talked about one in my personal statement. Okay. Um, and that one was it was called e the story of a number okay cool and um and that was quite interesting because it wasn't like it wasn't a maths textbook it was it was sort of a history book almost mm -hmm. but it was talking about the actual mathematicians and then along the way it was explaining what they'd done and um like all the things they've found and proved and things yeah and i thought and that was like really useful so i talked about it a little bit where i was learning all these results and they were like interesting it was all about logarithms and like the history of discovering the number pi or like how they discovered pi and how they discovered e and things like that and but then alongside that they had the sort of history and the like the yeah the context behind like how or why the mathematicians bothered basically to like find out and yeah. what their what their level was of understanding was at the point and then what they advanced it to mm -hmm. so yeah so that like i felt like that was that made me stand out a little bit because i felt like like it was a lot it wasn't just a maths textbook it wasn't just yeah. you know like this result this result this result it was sort of it made me it, like i felt like i had a, a good understanding of sort of like more general things as well rather than just maths as a yeah definitely definitely it sounds like a book i'd, I'd be interested in picking up myself actually um yeah i definitely agree agree with your point that it's it's quite good to use a wide variety of sources to demonstrate your passion for a subject because it, it does make you stand out because there yeah. tends to be a few sources that quite a few candidates use um yeah yeah so for example if you i assume as a prospective math student you'll talk a lot about the, the kind of the theories you learn at a level and maybe yeah. a few university theories but if you bring in the history of mathematics and the philosophy yeah. behind maths i think that does have the potential to make you stand out um all right great so moving on, uh, yeah, so which sentence or paragraph in your personal statement are you most proud of? Do you think kind of best um, illustrates your, your, your interest in maths? So, um, so I have two, yeah. So the first one is my, my opening sentence. Although, um, so that was, it goes, uh, deriving the quadratic formula in year nine, I first realized that maths was something I would joy, enjoy pursuing beyond school. Maths had always been something that was taught and shown to me, but understanding that I could use some simple concepts to get to a formula that had seemed ridiculously complicated at first genuinely excited me. Mm -hmm. So that was my sentence. And so, yeah, so the aim, it was my opening sentence and I wanted it to sort of reel people in or make me stand yeah. out. And th the way I did that, or I felt I was doing that was sort of by subverting what the opening statement's about like it wasn't something like some amazing maths or wasn't some like sort of amazing yeah. thing i'd discovered recently and was really advanced and technical it was just about yeah me messing around in year nine and like figuring out something and being just amazed by that or being proud of the way i was able to do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah and so and that sort of showed i guess my mathematical like curiosity, curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly and yeah and and yeah, so that's just, I was quite proud of that sentence because <laughs> I was originally my first drafts of talking about all this like extra um, advanced stuff like log, like, yeah, I can't even remember them, but there were some like complex numbers things going on yeah. and it was all advanced and I much preferred this because it, it felt more genuine as well, where I was like, that's where my passion was born, I, I would maybe say, kind of thing. So, yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So what was the second one that you mentioned? The second one was, so I wrote, proof by induction is one of um, my favourite techniques that I have learnt and at a maths masterclass course at Greenwich University, this was applied to Fibonacci numbers to investigate relationships within the series. This application was a very interesting way to explore proof by induction beyond the syllabus. So yeah, so that one, so proof by induction is something we did at A-level 
and we did pretty thoroughly at A level, and like, um, and I really did. It's probably my favorite part of it, the A level course. But then I liked, so I talked about that and talked about my like how I like it. But then I talked about how I like extended that further, or I learned something new about it um, yeah. at the uh, yeah maths master's course at this Greenwich University course. And then uh, yeah, and then I talked about yeah, so it was applied to Fibonacci numbers, and that felt like a more real like application, mm -hmm. and like um, yeah, a more sort of yeah, physical application and something that might actually be useful, I guess, rather than like at a level we sort of just do, we get a, we get a line of X's and we have to do proof by induction on that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah. All right, great. Um, now thank you for providing those examples. I think a lot of students are going to benefit from that. They they kind of the precise descriptions you you gave. Um, um, okay, let's ask the theory and the practice question. All right, cool. So how did you strike the balance between theory and practice um, in your personal statement? So I, I, th I think with maths, like as a subject, it's mostly theory. Well, like, um, especially for getting into uni, at that point, there's not, it's quite difficult to sort of have done practice um, or like have to do things beyond just sort of learning about the maths at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'd say on the whole, I focus most mostly on theory, but then the um, what I considered practice was sort of I talked a little bit about sort of school competitions or like Olympiad or like um, school maths competitions, and those are the sort of I guess you would say theory in that I'm using the maths in a sort of competitive environment at that point. Mm -hmm. But on the whole, like in terms of me uh, wanting to showcase my mathematical ability, I basically focused mostly on stuff I learned and. Yeah, book work, pretty much. All right, amazing. Uh, cool. So, final question. This one's a bit of a light-hearted question, but um, yeah. <laughs> like, it's something that we all tend to do in our personal statements. So, yeah. we thought we'd ask, uh, what was the most cringiest sentence in your personal statement? Looking back yeah. at it. So, yeah, this actually like it actually hurts me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, because yeah. So I talk about um, later. I talked about sort of tutoring. Um, so my like, so I was doing tutoring for like some year six kids at the time, and I think a couple of year nine and um, tens. And then I write, I relish the challenge of explaining concepts that came so easily to me in a way that struggling learners could understand. And like, <laughs> <laughs> and I hate that. <laughs> That's like, I get what I'm trying to say, but yeah. <laughs> no, that's 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 pretty that's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, no, it's always it's always good fun, like looking back at your personal statement and kind of seeing, yeah, just kind of just seeing how how much you really did want to sell yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. To get into, to get into yeah. uni. Um, I you to go, yeah. yeah. Uh, great, Asun. Like we've pretty much gone through any questions. The, the last thing I'll ask is, do you have any general tips for students um, writing their personal statement? for maths right now just general yeah. tip i would say yeah the main thing is i'd say like focus like use specific examples or like use specific results if you're talking about a math sort of uh, something that you really like about it use specific examples use specific results proofs and like names of the mathematicians whose results it is kind of thing mm -hmm. and like just show that you you know like you, you know the details basically rather than just saying oh that concept of that like that's really cool that um that idea mm -hmm. and yeah and then and the other thing in general i'd say is just to show as many people as possible mm, okay. okay and yeah yeah because i think that really helped because yeah when i talked about my like teachers um who helped the most like i did show like basically i showed my parents my like a lot of my school friends kind of thing and yeah yeah i think that all really helped